Now, as I said, it's time to meet our special guest for the evening. He's a young man whose rise to stardom has really been remarkable. Within the past year, you've seen him in Ship of Fools and King Rat, and you'll soon see him in a picture called The Lost Command. He's also presently co-starring with Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Here's a very gifted young actor, Mr. George Siegel. <laughs> We'll explain about the St. Valentine's Day massacre <laughs> here in just a moment, but, uh, well, thank you, George. It's... Now, in addition to uh, all these movies that I mentioned, I understand you do have a big TV special coming up. Yes, right? Death of a Salesman. When is it? May 8th, Sunday, May 8th, uh, on CBS. It's a big two-hour special. Who else is in the uh, show? Lee J. Cobb, Mildred Dunnick, James Valentino, mm -hmm. Edward Andrews. Well, I've heard a dance word that is very exciting. We'll all be seeing that. Now, I know that you have a secret for the panel to guess tonight, but uh, before we get to that, let's find out about the gentleman that you uh, brought with you tonight. Gentlemen, would you tell us your name and occupations, please? My name is Arnold Hyman. I'm a research psychologist. My name is Henry Ross. I'm a Supreme Court reporter. I'm John Booker. I'm a stockbroker. I'm Eric Hassel. I'm a stockbroker. Robert Thompson. I'm a psychologist. Richard Drywitz. I'm an import-export manager. A very shifty group, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, seriously, a very distinguished group indeed. Uh, now, gentlemen, if you will whisper to me, we'll show the audience your part of the secret right now. Uh-huh. George, I assume you have something to add to that? Yes, I do. Well... The clue panel concerns something about all these men, of course, and we'll start the questioning with Betsy Palmer. George, have yes. you ever met these gentlemen before? Yes, I have. Have they played a large part in your career? A part. Shall I say in your work? In my life. In your life? Ah. Uh, in your life, in you never saw such a large part as they played. <laughs> in all aspects of your life? No. In just the aspect as far as your theatrical work is concerned? No. They have... Is this uh, a yes or no game? Yes, 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 yes it can be. Very well. um, <laughs> these gentlemen are involved with you right now? Not these days, if that's what you mean. Have you dealt personally with each one of these each men? Each and every one of them, yes. <laughs> Twenty dollars now. You get real definite answers here, Mr. Gentlemen. Bill Cullen. It's very simple. What is it? Well... During his life, George, <laughs> starting with uh, the psychologist, has helped him. Two stockbrokers have made recommendations to him. <laughs> the import-export man has imported and exported for him. <laughs> the court reporter kept the minutes of legality uh, thing in which George was involved. And the clinical psychologist? Research. Oh, I research psychology. Research George's psychology. Bill? <laughs> Bill, I don't know how you did it, but that is completely wrong. <laughs> Jesus, Steve. Just Steve. <laughs> did you deal with these men as far as their professions pertain, George? Was it a personal relationship as opposed to a professional relationship? Well, he, he didn't deal with them in the way I think you mean. <laughs> you don't know how I mean. <laughs> I don't even know what I mean. <laughs> they contacted one way or another. Well, did they, were they contacted? You, no. you, you, you contacted them. Yes, they, oh, you, yes, yes. At one I, time. Yes. Yes. They all were in an audience at one of your pictures. That's possible. Must, must I answer that? <laughs> you don't have to submit to this indignity at all. No. Not an outburst like that, Bill, I'll clear the courtroom. <laughs> Make a note of that. Yes. <laughs> Strike that from the record. Forty dollars down, Beth. George, they are part of your past, but... Yes. Um, could it be conceivable that you would have consulted them when you had a particular role to play? And no. you wanted to know? No. Was it an area that you would have to investigate that you wanted some information on? No. Did you go to school with them? None of them. Did you meet them between school and did you know them during the period between school and the beginning of your career? Yeah, yes. In yes? The, in that, in that did area. they influence you in terms of your career? Oh, 
Tremendously. You lost money in the stock market. You had to become an <laughs> no, actor. No, no, no. No, no not, not really in terms of my career. No, they didn't. But they did influence you in that interim period. You decided not to be a stockbroker, not to be a psychologist. No? no. I'll give you a hint, Bess. What? There are professions that we've mentioned here are irrelevant. Isn't that They're nasty? They're Did they work on a film with you? No. That's the book. <laughs> 60 to go. Uh, 60 down, right. rather. Henry? Their professions are irrelevant? Yeah, well, listen, everybody's are in a way. What did you say to you? They're a handball team. Are you a handball team? <laughs> <laughs> you met them before you started acting? Yes. When did you start acting? In uh, 1956. How old were you? None of your bizwax. <laughs> 22. Say you've done well. <laughs> now, at the age of roughly between 20 and 22, you made contact with these gents. That's when I started acting. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Good boy. Before then, you knew them. <laughs> uh, much before? No, not much. A little before. A little before. Were you all living in the same city? Yes. In the same neighborhood? <sighs> More or less, roughly speaking, I guess. Uh, so you've seen them around. Were you all the members of a club of some kind? Not a club, Not but a club. Uh, you're in an the organiza right. a team. No. An organization. Mm, yes. Yes. Yes, Bess. Did you serve in an arm? Was it the army? Anything like that? Uh, no. Occasionally, no. it might have sounded like that. But the group of men uh, behind me, who cover such a wide range of professions, are known during their off working hours as the Red Onion Jazz Band. Huh. It's a group that's been playing together since college days, and we brought them to the studio tonight for a sort of reunion, because once upon a time, their banjo player was none other than George Siegel. Oh. Here. Uh, George, the fellas are going off to get into their positions there and warm up. We ought to hear a little more about this. When did you first start working as a banjo player? Uh, in college. At first at Haverford College, and then I came to Columbia, and I met uh, this group. Want to make a little extra pocket money or something? Yes, I yes. I hear that you have occasionally uh, worked as the leader of the group. Yes, well, it depend who, depended on who booked the job. And when I booked it, <laughs> we played under the name of Bruno Lynch and his Imperial Jazz Band. So you are Bruno Lynch. <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, why, why did you call yourself Bruno Lynch? Um, I thought it had uh, more punch than George Siegel in his Imperial Jazz Band. <laughs> Isn't that funny? There's no telling how far he might have gone if he'd kept the name Bruno Lynch. Today you might even be starring in a movie with Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. George, when was the last time you and the group got together? They played at my wedding. Well, that's mighty neighborly, but isn't the Dixieland Jazz Band kind of loud at a wedding? Uh, no, no, they played, you, you need every booking you can get. And I right. see. And you couldn't turn them down. No. Well, we're all very eager to hear what the group sounds like, and I'll tell you right now, as a musician and just a fellow likes to listen, they are great, and wait till you hear this guy play banjo. George, help yourself to our stage. I hope your banjo is still there. Ladies and gentlemen, the uh, Red Onion Jazz Band featuring the former Bruno Lynch, the late, great Bruno Lynch, and the banjo playing That's a Plenty. Here they are.
We'll be back in a minute with news about next week's show after this important message.